and then to immediately go into this action piece. It was really good pacing for the episode, I thought. Yeah. Brooke? Um, I liked it. Um, I, I can't... I mean... Yeah, I liked it. I'm trying to think of, like, how to explain it. Like, it's not... It wasn't as, like, super, super duper, like, uh, exciting as you would expect it to be, but then you find out later, you know, you kind of find out later that they could have shot him down, you know, because it's like, oh, oh, they just got him. It's like, wait a minute, wouldn't they, if, if they were trying to get him, wouldn't they have gotten him? And mm-hmm. I was kind of like, so the first time I watched it, I was like, oh. but then later, you know, I watch it, and then I know what's going to happen, so I'm like, okay, I get it. But <laughs> I was just like, yeah. I was like, it would have been, like, more dramatic if he'd actually been, like, shot out of the sky, and then they transported him over. But then, you know, of course I got it. Like, yeah. What happened? But, um, yeah, for but sure. yeah, I definitely, like, sometimes I watch this and I'm like, wow, that CG's pretty good. Um, and I agree that this one had really pretty good, uh, on, pretty good, um, effects on it, too. I believe Netflix, if that's, that's where you guys are watching yeah. these, because that's where they're readily available. Um, mm-hmm. Netflix does have the remastered, so oh. that's probably oh, nice. why nice. the CGI looks as good as it does. I would bet if I dug up, my old VHS tapes and then dug up a VCR player, um, somewhere. I I think you would probably see a marked difference, Um, but, um, there is, uh, I mean, there, I I guess they don't do anything special whenever they remaster like the, the explosions, (laughs) because the explosions look totally like real explosions with like a backdrop put in. Yeah. So that, you know, they're, (laughs) they're not as seamless as like they can do nowadays if they use like, a cross between CGI and and explosives or something, but um, but yeah. Otherwise, it's always at least at least the remastered versions are always beautiful for the time frame. <laughs> yeah, I I agree. Um, yeah, I, I I do enjoy this opening piece too. Like, I think it's a really great setup of you know here we have this like Romulan defecting and it's like you know mortal enemies of the Federation, but he wants to defect and he's asking for asylum and it's all very exciting and um. So just a quick note on the actor who's playing the Romulan. We come to know him uh as uh Satal. Uh, that's not his real name, everybody. Spoilers. Um, so. <laughs> If you this haven't is already guy... watched it, then what are you doing? What are you listening to this show for? I don't even know. Um, We're not that interesting. This is a, a character actor who, if you see him without the makeup, you go, oh, I know this guy. He's been in everything. He had, um, he's been in other episodes of Star Trek playing different characters, um, but he's also made the rounds in the 80s and the 70s on like the love boat and murder she wrote and not landing and all that stuff you know he was like that guy and um and his name is James Sloyan and uh yeah i he will show up again probably more memorably in deep space 9 where he will play Dr. Mora, the scientist who discovered Odo. If you watch Deep Space Nine, you'll remember that. Uh, Yeah, that's the same actor who plays um, Odo's quote-unquote father, the (laughs) scientist who discovered him. So uh, we get uh, our first captain's log here. It's captain's log, stardate 43462.5. And for those of you playing at home, that is Wednesday, November 3rd, 2365. At about eight, at about ten thirty six a.m. I love the Stardate Converter website. It is so helpful. <laughs> yes, if, if whoever made that is listening, we very much appreciate it, and it's we a love lot of it. Fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. For a um, moment, I thought you just knew how to read those numbers and knew what it meant. And I was like, "Wow, your dork level is so high." I know. I'm so <laughs> impressed. And then oh you're like, God. "Website," and I'm like, "Oh, she knows how to click on things." <laughs> Not impressed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now I just think you're a garbage person. Like, oh, no. <laughs> I thought you were cool before, and now you're just a jerk. But yeah, I know. I should have. I should have been like, I just know that, Joe. Don't you? And then it I would. Been... I would hook, line, and sinker. I would have believed you. <laughs> and then everyone out there listening would have known better because we've talked about it. Yeah, just about, about every it. episode. About the, the website. So uh, this Romulan claims to be a low-ranking logistics officer, Sub-Lieutenant Sital. In the observation lounge, he tells them that on Nelvana 3, which is a planet in the neutral zone, 
there is a secret Romulan base and that there are warbirds and legions of troops are scheduled to be there and that there is going to be an invasion from Nelvana 3 into Federation space and the Romulans are going to start a war. And Picard's like, hmm, cool story, bro. All right, so uh, go to sick bay, get that wound cleaned up. I would love and, uh, to hear Patrick Stewart say, "Cool story, cool bro. story, bro." I know. I I tend to make people sound much more like California surfer dude when I redo these recaps. Um, <laughs> I don't, I have I to don't know. I would feel like you would make them more like New York, but you don't. I don't. It's weird. I know. It's strange. I really can't explain that. I mean, maybe one day I'll throw in a hey. I'm walking over here in the softy <laughs> uniform. And I don't know. Maybe one day I'll throw that in there. Or like, um, hey, we're flying over here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> like whenever, uh, whenever they bring up the calm, like you'll be like, and Picard was like, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I kind of love this line here where like Satal is like, no doubt you'll want to question me further. And like, almost like, don't you want to know more? And then Picard's like, Oh, no doubt. Like, it's such a weird little exchange. And Picard is totally just, oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll totally talk to you later. If I believe you. Like, he, so right from the get, everyone's skeptical, right? And uh, as as you should be. And, you know, R- Riker says, oh, this got to be a ploy. Like, they're trying to lure us into the neutral zone, get us to start a fight or something. And Picard's like, well, we got his ship. So let's, like, take it apart and discover all this Romulan tech that we don't know anything about. Picard tells Jordy to take a team over to the ship and like start breaking it down and tells Riker and Troy that they're going to interrogate us at all. But before any of that can happen, the scout ship explodes. <gasps> Boom. I put that in the notes. No! <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even been following along with the, the notes. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw that in there. I don't know why. I just felt like it, fit there so the ship explodes and uh in sick bay uh riker's like so oh, what's the deal bro and satal's like i set the self-destruct button before i left the ship uh he says basically he's like look the federation the federation credo is exploitation and i'm not here to betray my people i'm here to stop a war so i'm not gonna let you get your grubby little fingers all over my romulan tech and so you can like learn stuff about the Romulan Empire. He makes a reference here, or actually Dr. Crusher makes a reference to a to previous events that have happened at Galorndon Core, a planet that keeps get, getting brought up on Star Trek. Um, it's just a happening spot, everybody. If you haven't planned your vacation yet, you should go to Galorndon Core. It's, it's a uh, really awesome place. It is. <laughs> everybody goes going. there. Everyone, all the cool kids are going. Yeah. And so the events that uh, Beverly is talking about, how she had an opportunity to learn more about Romulan physiology, happened, if you'd like to watch this another time, Season 3, Episode 7, The Enemy, um, with a really cool subplot involving Lieutenant Worf. So um, that's a really cool episode, too. And here they trade a few colorful Klingon and Romulan <laughs> curse words. I like Which that. I, yeah. Yeah, she's translated them in the notes, y'all. <laughs> this is great. That's yes. great. Now, in okay, Joe, this may increase my nerd level in your eyes again because I already knew what patak meant. <laughs> I love it. I already knew what that meant. The other two I had to look up, but uh, a patak is a bastard or asshole that might get bleep. A toza is a wimp or a wuss. And Riker says only a Varul would use such language in public. And Varul is basically the equivalent of a patak, you're a bastard or an asshole. So in case you'd ever like to brush up on your Klingon and Romulan curse words, you can do that on Memory Alpha, which is a great little website full of um, uh, Star Trek tidbits and including curse words in other languages that don't even actually exist. So that's fun. (laughs) So now, uh, you know, they put Satal in his quarters. Riker's like, we'll question you a little later. And Satal's like, all right, cool. And then he pulls out what looks like a Necco wafer out of his boot. (laughs) I'll just eat this gross candy later. Like, so, of course, they're hinting at foreshadowing something with this 
thing. I mean, I, I was, I mean, I did see it and think, oh, that's quite large for like cyanide pill or something. <laughs> <'Cause> that's, <laughs> you know, I watch, I watch like spy things, so that's that's the first thing I went for. But I did think it looked rather large for that. <laughs> Good. Now, if this would have been MST3K, it would have been like, sweet, they didn't find my sweet tart. <laughs> yeah, yes! He's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, good, I had that spare Tums in my But, like, <laughs> like seriously, like, what is the security detail on the Enterprise doing? Like, that was just chilling in the top of his boot. I, like, listen, if Tasha, if Tasha Yar were still alive, this probably still would have happened. Because yes, she didn't do anything. Absolutely. Like, what else did he have in there? Acid? Like, what? I Oh, here, I just have this incredibly toxic thing. He's got, like, an ice kill pick to, like, stab it. somebody or, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's got a shank. <laughs> He's got a homemade shank. He's got a sharpened <laughs> Romulan toothbrush in his boot. You never know when that's going to come in handy, Joe. See, if I'm it had been Klingons, I would have doubted that because they don't brush their teeth, if you've noticed. <laughs> I'm fixing to stick some patook with this. <laughs> I'm gonna stick you in the patook. <laughs> I like that you said I'm fixing to do that because I love how you just blended. Ah, oh, howdy, partner. I'm fixing to have a patook in the face. You know what I mean? <laughs> this starship ain't big enough for the both of us. You know it's. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, he's definitely got that attitude, though, you know? <laughs> kind of, he does. Like, we don't trust this guy. Let's not pat him down at all. Good call. No, let, let, let's not. We wouldn't not, want to make him feel uncomfortable. Let's not search him at all. That exactly. would be weird. That would be weird. He's only a member of a race that totally hates us. Well, so and not... also, he was beamed aboard the ship. And doesn't that break something down to an, to an atomic level and then reassemble it? Look, Joe, so that means in gonna... the computer they're like, let's put this little poison tablet back together. <laughs> you know, Joe, if you're gonna if you're gonna rudely point out plot holes in all of the episodes, <laughs> I'm just not gonna have you back on. Yeah, I didn't even bring up the flickering flames in the in the in the holodeck room after they said freeze simulation. The flames kept flickering. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, Joe. <laughs> oh, I found Rebecca's trigger. <laughs> But it's 1990, and we're doing the best that we can, okay? <laughs> Stop beautiful. being a Varun. Sorry. Please proceed. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I love it. No one pokes as much fun of Trek as I do because you have to You have to be able to poke fun at your fandom and still love it. Like, you oh, have yes. to. And I can, as much as I love Star Trek and as much as I love, like, the Wrath of Khan, which is my favorite movie. I everybody knows that by now, I think. But like, I I could sit down and tell no, you what's I, wrong with every I scene in that movie. Honestly, didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, I, know. I don't think okay. I could not say That's that. That's okay. I deserve that. Um, I couldn't say it without like laughing at the end. I was trying not to, but I thought maybe I'd gotten laughed out for know. a second. I <laughs> deserve it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back on the bridge, uh, Data and Picard are analyzing the Nelvana system. But so far, uh, they're not coming up with anything on their long-range sensors. Picard gets a Priority One message from Starfleet uh, with a time delay of 2 hours and 22 minutes. He listens to the message in his ready room, and it's from an admiral. I don't believe they give this admiral's name, and he may have shown up in other episodes. He does look familiar, but I do not know. He's not a named character, unfortunately, so... Actually, I take it back. He's Admiral Hayden. He's named on IMDb. Uh, that's who it is, although I don't think the show names him. And the Admiral tells him, look, here's the deal. Um, we uh, we think this is totally weird, um, uh, but we've called an emergency meeting of Starfleet. We're sending the Enterprise to the border, and you kind of just hang out at the border near Nelvana 3, and then we'll like give you further instructions. Picard's like, all right, cool. And then we get sort of a little breadcrumb here. It seems like a nothing uh, throwaway line, but it is a breadcrumb for a future payoff. Picard uh, calls for Worf to come to his ready room, but then that's the end of the scene there. Now we have Jordy is analyzing the chase between the scout ship and the warbird. And 
we get in this scene, and Joe, I don't know if you agree, but it's 